What is a prophet? <laughs> In the Bible, it says a prophet is one who receives communications from God and delivers them to the people. So, in other words, prophets get messages from God and give them to the people. But prophets don't necessarily have to tell the future. There are different kinds of prophets. There are prophets who warn the uh, tell the future and warn people, like Daniel and Joseph. Other prophets correct the people, like Hosea. Then, some prophets lead, like Moses. Then there are prophets like Nathan, who was assigned to a specific person, David. <coughs> prophets tell the truth, even if it might hurt them. But all these prophets were in the Bible times. How about now? Will there be prophets in the end times? Turn with me in your Bibles to Joel chapter 2, verses 28 and 29, page 1135. In the Pew Bible, 1135. Joel 2, 28 to 29. And it says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Joel's telling us that there will be prophets in the end times, young and old, men servants and maid servants. All shall become instruments of God for this great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. As in the days of Acts, we shall experience equal or more intense levels of the Holy Spirit. But if God is going to pour out his Holy Spirit, don't you think Satan knows this? Don't you think Satan will create counterfeits to try to deceive, us, to deceive us? In fact, Jesus warns us about this. Now turn with me to Matthews chapter 24, verse 24, page 1,233 in the Pew Bible. 1,233, Matthews 24, And it says, For the false Christ and false prophets will arise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. So there will also be false Christ and false prophets. Well, there will be true prophets and false prophets, probably more false than true. But how do we tell if a prophet is true or false? If someone came into this church and proclaimed himself as a prophet, would you be able to tell if he was true or false? Allow me to give you three examples of so-called prophets. And you think in your head if they are true or false. Here's my first example. He was born on December 23, 1805. And he lived in an area where there was very intense religious diversity during the Second Great Awakening. He didn't know which church was the right one but he had his opinions. Then in 1820, when he was 14, he went into a grove of trees to pray. While he was praying, he had a vision. In his vision, he saw God the Father and Jesus Christ. They came to him and told him not to join any of the churches because none of them were right. Then, three years later, while he was lying in bed thinking about the vision, he received a visit from an angel. The angel's name was Moroni. Moroni told him where a hidden book was, buried on a hill close to his house. The, it contained the ancient Israelite, it contained God's dealings with the ancient Israelite inhabitants of the Americas. And it was on, inscribed on metal plates. But Moroni told him that he had to se follow several commandments in order to obtain the book. It was four years until he would let him take it. But when he did, he published it and translated it in 1830. By then, he had many followers and had a few branches. His church grew rapidly, and soon he had enough people to build a city. So he built one in Illinois and called it Nauru. 
This man is the founder of one of the fastest growing Christian denominations in the world, the Church of Latter-day Saints of Jesus Christ, or the Mormon Church. He is Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith claimed that he was a true prophet, but is he a true prophet? Why is he or why is he not? Can you prove it from the Bible? Let me give you my second example. He was born on February 4, 1906, into a family of eight. He was always expected to follow his father's footsteps in being a psychiatrist. But at a very young age, he decided that he wanted to be a Christian pastor. Um, his parents supported him, so he went to the college in Tübingen. Later, he went to the University of Berlin, where he got his doctorate at the age of only 21. The church regulations said you had to be 25 or older in order to be a pastor, so he was too young to be ordained. As a result, he went to the Union Theological Seminary in New York City. During World War II, back in Germany, he was a leader in the Confessing Church, which opposed Adolf Hitler's anti-Semitic policies or anti-Jew policies. Between 1933 and 1935, he pastored two German-speaking Protestant churches in London. After that, he went back to Germany to head a seminary of the Confessing Church, which was shut down twice by the Nazi government. They also banned him from preaching, teaching, and eventually any kind of public speaking. In 1939, he joined a secret group of high-ranking op military officers in trying to assassinate Hitler, a plan called the July 20 plot. It failed, and he was arrested. He was charged with conspiracy and was imprisoned in Berlin for one and a half years. He was hanged on April 9, 1945. He is considered one of the most frequently quoted theologians in modern times. His work is required reading in theological seminaries all over the world. This man is Diedrich Bonhoeffer. He is considered a modern prophet by many, but is he a true prophet? Didn't he preach about God? Now here's my third example. She was born on November 26, 1827. In the third grade, she was severely injured. She was able to recover, but the injury prevented her from being able to continue her education. Then when she was 12, her family joined in with a spiritual revival that swept across the United States. At 16, the group of believers thought that Jesus would come back, but he didn't, and the people lost hope. Two months later, she had her first vision. It depicted people following Jesus, marching to heaven. She shared her vision with other people, which gave them hope after the devastating disappointment. She and her husband helped start a, church, a new church in 1863. They preached about it and they participated in the founding of many schools and hospitals. She traveled to different countries as a missionary preaching her beliefs. Then in 1900, she settled in California, where she stayed until her death in 1915. Over her life, she wrote over 40 books, 5,000 periodical articles, and 5,000 pages of manuscripts. Her literature is translated into over 135 languages. She is the most translated American nonfiction author of either gender. She had over 2,000 videos.